Right. Thanks for coming. So today, please have a yeah. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, my talk is on the local version of Kapinos intersection theorem, and this is joint work with Matado Sandis, who is a grad student with Boyd Um Okay. So uh, this the topic is set in extremal set theory. And we will cons generally consider uh, families in uh, which are k uniform. So we write, write this, where uh, this is just the set of all k subsets of n. So uh, these are all a subset n, uh, where the size of a is k. And so uh, one of the uh, most studied definitions in extremal set theory uh, is the definition of a family being intersecting. So uh, F is intersecting if uh, for all uh, F and F prime in the family we have that they have non-empty intersection. So often uh, it is said that the, one of the starting points of external set theory is the elish corrado theorem. So um, And this gives the maximum size of a k-uniform family um, if this family is intersecting. So, uh, at least 2k and uh, f is intersecting. Then the size of f is at most n minus 1, just k minus 1. And uh, this bound is obtained, as we can see, for instance, uh, by taking a star. So uh, we fix one vertex, and then we take all the k sets which contain this one vertex. So from n minus 1 remaining vertices, we can uh, pick sets of size k minus 1. Uh, OK, so there's, there's another uh, definition that, that is very prominent in extremal set theory, and that is uh, the definition of the shadow. Mm -hmm. So the shadow of F is, uh, so we write it like this, and uh, we just create the shadow by taking any uh, set in our original family and then deleting one of the vertices. So this is F minus X, where X is an element in F, which is an element in our family. So I hope that the, the curly F, which is the family, and the non-curly F, which are the sets in the family, that uh, they should always be distinguishable. Mm. And also for, for this definition, we have one very uh, important theorem, namely the, the cross katnas theorem. And uh, so let me just, there are several versions. And, but as a simple version, it gives us a bound on the size of the shadow, uh, given that we know something about the size of f. So uh, if f is some k-uniform family, and um, the size of f is x choose k, where we allow x to be a real, and um, yeah, so the definition of this binomial coefficient probably you know it, but it's essentially the same that uh, also makes sense for for real x. Um, okay, so if if we have this size, then the this the shadow 
is at least of size x uh, to k minus 1. Why does this make sense? So what this tells us is that if we think of x as being some integer, then uh, we can, and, and we fix the size of our family, then we can minimize the shadow by uh, gathering everything of the family just in some set of size x. Right? So if we have some ground set of size n, um, and now we want to have some family of, of this size, and we think of x as an integer, then um, what this tells us that the example where uh, we just take x vertices here, and then take the whole, uh, I mean, the, the largest possible family, so all the k subsets of this set, set x, then uh, we have that the shadow has exactly this size. Is it x to k minus 1 or x to minus 1 to k minus 1? No, it, x yeah. choose k minus 1. Um, OK. So um, these are somehow, uh, there, there, there are many results then on, uh, on intersecting families and their generalizations of the, of the, the intersecting definition. Um, and there are also many results on the shadow, and the shadow can also be used in proofs and so on. Um, and there's also a theorem, uh, and that is Cantona's intersection theorem, that combines these two definitions. Um, so uh, it says that if we have a K uniform intersecting family, then the size of the shadow is at least as large as the size of the family. So um, if f is k uniform, to look at a local variant of this, uh, meaning that we have this actually at one element. And I will uh, make that more precise in a moment. Um, so first, uh, we actually also have this for cross-intersecting families. So what are cross-intersecting families? Mm. It uh, should be intuitive. So uh, f and g are cross-intersecting. So if I don't write anything, then they always set systems, right? So, but uh, we don't need uniformity for these definitions. So now uh, we want to say that whenever we take one element in this family and one element in this family, then they should have non-empty intersection. So for all f in f and G and D uh, have that F intersection G is not empty. Okay, so but in particular F and G themselves <coughs> don't need to be intersected. So it's just about um, the interplane. So. Okay, and uh, Franke proved that that uh, we also have this kind of of theorem for cross intersecting families. <laughs> and so what we uh, get is that this inequality holds for one of the two families. So then f. So, uh, yeah, now, uh, first, are there any questions so far? Uh, yeah. yeah, I have one silly question, maybe. Uh, so it's, did you say that Katona's theorem implies that it's just or is it uh, something unrelated? No, 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 they, they, these are unrelated. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh, 
So, so these are just examples for. Oh, yeah. So what what I what I meant is just that sort of philosophically, uh, this theorem combines these these two different uh, definitions, which themselves are somehow part of the nice uh, cornerstone theorems. Can I ask some yeah. random? <laughs> so they, this, I mean, the statements of this cross intersecting yeah. reminds me of super colorful some theorems. Colorful something. Yeah, colorful <laughs> heavy or colorful something. Is that any? Um, I know. Similarity. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can yeah. talk about that later. I, yeah, I don't know that. Um, okay, so. Um, now we want to, to look at what does it mean to, uh, to look at this in, in a local form. Um, so for some k uniform family and some element of the ground set, we can define the link of, of, um, of f at this element. And we obtain it by just uh, taking any set in F that contains I, but then deleting I from it. So F minus I when F of I is negative. Okay, and um, then uh, the, the link is also very prominent in uh, in extreme set theory or also in hypergraph theory. Um, one could maybe also say that those are basically the same. Um, and so now the, uh, what Frankl conjectured, but actually in, in completely uh, different work, so, so not like this, this thing is, uh, I think, from maybe the 80s or something, and, but then uh, this conjecture was more recent. Uh, so do we have that this inequality holds uh, for some link? So the conjecture uh, so if n larger than two k and um, f k uniform and intersecting. element i such that um, this inequality holds for the link of i. Okay. Um, and so, so here maybe uh, you're wondering uh, what the order of the operations is, right? Whether we first look at this and then we take the shadow, or whether we first take the shadow and then uh, we do this. Uh, but actually, it's the same for, for this thing. Um, but we will look at this in a more general setting, and then I will uh, say something about the order there. So uh, he also made the same conjecture for cross-intersecting families. So where, again, we get then a statement of this form. So. Um, we find some element i such that we have this or that. Okay. And um, then in our work, we proved both of these conjectures if uh, n is larger than, uh, than roughly k squared. And I will write the theorem in a moment because uh, we actually the theorem tells us much more. And for that, we need a bit more notation. Um, okay. But so this is the, the local version and in particular for n large enough, uh, our theorem will imply that. Okay. And um, so uh, as I said, we want to look at this in a in a bit more uh, general setting. So we can say that if 
we have our family and some sets A and B, which are some sets of the ground set. Um, and then we set this F of A and B bar as what? So uh, instead of just taking one element here, which has to be contained and which we then delete from all those sets, we here want to take a, a potentially large, larger set A. And uh, in this part, that just means that we restrict ourselves to the complement of B. So let's write this down. Uh, these are all the F minus A, where um, F is in our original family, and A is completely contained in F, and the intersection of B and F is empty. Okay. So if you want to think of it in, in hypergraph terms, we look at the link of this set, and uh, but we want to induce it on uh, we want to in induce that hypergraph on the complement. Mm. And and for the proof, we will look at these uh, these more general forms of links. Um, okay, and then uh, one one more uh, definition, and then we will be done with the definitions. Mm. So we uh, we will talk about pseudo intersecting families, uh, and what does that mean? So um, F. is pseudo-intersecting if uh, for all x that we can choose in, in our ground set we have that fx bar satisfies that this inequality that we're always looking at so uh, fx bar is smaller than the shadow of f x bar. Okay. So at first you you might wonder, okay, what does this have? Why why are you calling it pseudo intersecting? Uh, so the the reason is that that this captures somehow the the most important uh, property that we have in intersecting families. So in in particular, if f is intersecting, uh, then it's also pseudo intersecting. So if we take uh, some intersecting f, and we induce it on uh, on some potentially smaller set, then it's still intersecting, right? Because it's still part of the original family. So if the original family was intersecting, this induced family is also intersecting. Oops. But then, so what does this notation mean? Uh, this? Yeah. Ah, it's it's just the the same just for for this and being empty. Ah, okay. Yeah. So so if we don't write, uh, I mean, also this thing would would be. F A <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so like we, we don't always uh, need to restrict ourselves and um, and we don't always need to um, to take the link somewhere. Um, and yeah, here we don't need to take the link, so, so we just want to say, okay, we exclude this part. Um, but we don't say that, that we look at the elements which contain some thing. Okay. Um, okay, so, so uh, yeah, as I said, in particular, intersecting families are pseudo intersecting. Um, and, and this is somehow the, the property that, that we really care about in the end. Um, so, so throughout throughout our our proof, we will uh, we will not be able to to say that that certain families remain intersecting, but we can say that certain families are pseudo intersecting, and that will be enough to uh, do some sort of induction. And uh, then the other question that one might ask is, okay, um, but is this maybe uh, is any family satisfying this already intersecting? So th I mean, uh, that would be quite curious, I guess. Uh, but also, it's not true. Um, so if if you just take a very uh, very simple family, so it's just a graph, 
uh, meaning that that uh, f consists of of these uh, four edges, just the, the C4. Um, then, uh, whenever you restrict yourselves to to some subset of the of the ground set, uh, potentially, so x can also be empty, right? Um, then, then the the shadow will always be at least as large as the family. So this thing is pseudo intersecting, but it's not intersecting, right? Like this set doesn't intersect. Um, okay, and so now also. Uh, let us remark that if we would show that uh, f of i, so uh, if we show that there is some i such that uh, f i is pseudo intersecting. Uh, we are done. Okay, because as I said, in particular, we can choose this just to be the empty set, and then um, we know that this inequality holds for f i x bar, but x bar is the empty set, so that's just f i. So we have that uh, the conjecture holds. Okay. Um, questions so far. Oh. You said the x. You take x as an empty set instead of. No, I'm confused. Why? Why? So you're trying to prove the conjecture, right? Yeah, yeah. And so if we, I, so we will we will go to the proof in in a moment. Oh, well, I see. Sorry. But but the, so 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 this is just to say that yeah. in particular, if we right, show right, right, right. that this is pseudo intersecting, then we will also have proved the, the conjecture. Um, Sorry, can I? Yeah. Why is that conjecture interesting? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, I mean, I guess that that is the question for for every problem that, that we think about. Um, do you mean why why it's not just um, so compare with like say Katona's theorem? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you ask a bit more. So yeah. why that extra part is interesting? Tradition? Um. So, so I mean, th this this thing. Okay, um, I mean, there, there are several reasons. So one reason is that actually, uh, when Frankel conjectured this, then uh, yeah, I, sh I should also say maybe uh, a good reason why the conjecture is interesting is that Frankel conjectured it. <laughs> um, but um, so in the work where he conjectured it, he uh, said that you can use that to relatively easily prove some other conjecture. Um, and and indeed, with even with uh, with the worst bound that, that we have for for n, we improve the the best known bound for this other conjecture as well. Um, but yeah, so so maybe I, I could have mentioned that as well. But this other conjecture, then I would have in, uh, I would have had to introduce more notation. Um, but but I would say that actually it's maybe even more interesting just for its own sake because it it gives like a local version of this, right? And, and it, one could also th say, that, okay, why doesn't it just follow by average, right? B because you, you can say, okay, um, if we sum up uh, these sides, then every edge is counted be because we are k-uniform. So every edge will be counted k times, right? For, for every vertex that, that is contained in, we count it once in that vertices link. Um, but but on, the others, on, on this side, you, you can't really do uh, any sort of averaging, because uh, you don't know for for any uh, for any set that appears in this shadow, you don't know from how many sets it originates, right? So so we could have uh, some k minus one set, and then we could have a number of vertices such that each of these um, together with this k minus one set forms an edge, and therefore we we can't just uh, average over this side. And even if we could average, then it would not be clear. Why, um, like both uh, both averagings work at the same vertex, mm. and yeah. So so then um, one it, it's it, it's somehow the, the the question is whether whether this holds in the uh, like locally, right? Um, so we we do know that 
overall, if we look at the, the whole family, then we have this. But does it also look, uh, hold already for, for uh, just the family, which is the link of one with this? Um, yeah. Any other questions so far? Okay. Um, so maybe use. Um, okay, so uh, now we uh, we have all the notation to state our theorem, and uh, so this uh, is if f is exactly. There are. Um, there are sets M1, Mk, uh, such that we will have this property that um, that we are uh, that we, this inequality is satisfied locally, but we have it for every uh, i set that we pick in M i. Okay, so so we don't only have this for for one vertex here, but we can pick any set as long as it's in the right ground set here. So um, such that uh, for all i and um, all all a. Uh, yeah, sorry. So here I'm using uh, slightly different notation because I'm more used to this one. Um, so this thing here we also write as n k. Okay. So meaning that uh, we write the ground set here, and then uh, in the parentheses in the exponent we uh, notify how how like what's the size of the, the sets that we are considering. Okay. So these are all the k subsets of n. And here, we want A to be an I subset of this set MI. Okay. So I, I could also write this and all um, I sets, or I subsets, A of MI. Um, we have. That F A is pseudo intersecting. And uh, we want a restriction on the size of these, right? Because otherwise they could just be empty. So, and the size of MI is at least. And so this is also a surprising uh, thing. So the conjecture just, just asks whether there exists one such element. But essentially, what we are showing is that all, apart from uh, a squared number of elements, uh, squared in K, will satisfy this property. So here we have N minus, and then um, uh, okay. So, okay, how does this again translate to the conjecture? Uh, for the conjecture, it would be enough to say that there exists some M1 subset such that every one subset, which means just single elements, of this uh, set M1 satisfy that F of I, if that, uh, that element is I or maybe X, uh, F of X is pseudo-intersecting. As I remarked over there, pseudo-intersecting in particular means that we satisfy this inequality that we want. Okay, so uh, that we are pseudo intersecting, and uh, then MI should be of a certain size. Mm -hmm. So if our ground set, uh, because here we don't need to assume anything on the ground set, but if our ground set is now larger than K plus 1 uh, choose 2, mm -hmm. that, which is like the sum of all these if, if I is 1, then um, we have that 
that M1 will still be of positive size. So meaning there exists one such element. Mm -hmm. So the remark is um, this theorem applies Then um, let's uh, let's maybe look at the proof, but let's start with the with the idea of the proof. Um, so uh, when when you when you proof this uh, this Erdős Korada uh, theorem, uh, then then often it is so you you use this method called shifting, but we don't need that here. So um, I will not introduce that to, to avoid that notation, unless in the end uh, you want me to. But um, what one uses there as well is that you can write a family as um, uh, this union n, where this just means we take this family and then to each uh, to each of the sets in this family we add n. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and then this joint union with Okay, so why is this true? Um, well, f consists of sets which contain n and sets which don't contain n. And these uh, two subfamilies are disjoint. This is just one of them, right? This is the, the subfamily which consists of all the sets in f which do not contain n. And uh, this one, so without that part, it originates from all the sets which contain n, but then, and because it, it makes sense to define it by taking out the, that element. Um, so we took out n, and then we just need to place it in there again. But we know that, that these sets originated from sets which contain n. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we can uh, decompose f in this way. But now also, uh, we can decompose the shadow, or almost decompose the shadow. So um, this, this shadow, we can write as um, the shadow of uh, f at n, where um, then we place n in, in there again. Um, and uh, the shadow f n bar. OK, so, so this. Um, like one, one can just ah sorry sorry here we don't have equality but we just have this contained. Um, so one one can just check by by saying okay so what are the sets in here and then what are the sets uh, here where where do they originate from right like these sets come from uh, some some elements in the family which do not contain uh, n bar but in particular each of uh, so. This, this thing is just part, this is a subset of, of, of f, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a subfamily of f. So therefore, when we take the shadow, then this obviously will also be contained in the shadow. Um, and, and none of those elements in here contain n. Um, and for, for this part, we can also say that, okay, every, um, every thing here originates from uh, some set which contained n, but then so as I as I said earlier, we can think of the order as first applying this and then applying the shadow. So um, we first take out n, and then we we take the shadow, which means that uh, we delete some other element x in uh, in this set. And um, okay, but then we can also just so this was taken out, and. Uh, and then later this was taken out, and then what what remains? So f, if if this is our starting set, and then f minus x uh, union n. Uh, this set will will be some set in this family. Okay, and 
But then we know that, that we can just add n, and if we add n again, then this just means as we started with, uh, with this set f, and we deleted x. So that we will also be an element in the shadow. Uh, so that means that, that, we, uh, that we do have this containment. But here we add n. So each of the, the, the sets that we get on this side will contain n. And these didn't contain n. So therefore, it's disjoint. So why is this laddie call? Uh, do you have an example where it's proper containment? Uh, why, why it's not equal? Um, yeah, so... Um, because of the link of n, for example. Yeah, yeah, so, so if, if, one, um, if one takes out the, the element which, um, which you have the link on, then um, you will... So some elements in f of n might not be, uh, might not be contained in one of those two. Consider, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. consider all the sets containing n, right? you remove n. Those might not appear. So if you take a union with the f of n, then it's going to be equal, but you don't want, you rather want to have a disjoint union. Yeah, 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 exactly. We, we want the disjoint union uh, for the reason that uh, we are interested in the sizes. And so what we want to say is that um, if we have the inequality for this part, right, if we know that, uh, that fn, the size of fn, is uh, at most the size of the shadow of fn, and we have the same thing also for fn bar, then we get that the size of, of f is at most the size of the shadow. Um, and so um, this means that if fn and Then uh, we also have that like this. Okay. Simply because uh, this this containment gives us an inequality uh, to the direction of this, and we have the inequality from the size of this to the size of this, and from the size of this to the size of that. And here we have equality, and all the unions are disjoint, so we can uh, sum them. Okay, but. I mean, th this itself, it, like, we get something for this. So, so that, that's not what we what we are interested in, right? Um, but uh, what what happens if if we start with some f of i? Can we also decompose it in a similar way? Um, and okay, we can just for for any j, we can say okay, this is uh, f i j where, again, we have to uh, add this j. And uh, then, so these are, ori uh, all these sets originate from some set which contains both, F, uh, both i and j. And then we have those which contain i, but not j. Um, and, but again, this itself maybe uh, doesn't help so much, even though uh, maybe I, like, with my, uh, with me stating the theorem, I already spoiled it that probably we will look at some sort of induction. And then you might imagine that, like, ah, OK, maybe for this one, we, we will have some control over that. Um, so how do we get control over this one? Now let's look at fj as well. So we have the same part here, only that we need to add i. But I mean, if I haven't stressed that enough, th this part, we don't really care about that, because we are only interested in the size of this family. And for that, that doesn't change the size. Sorry, I, I have again trouble interpreting that notation. This thing? No, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> so they, these are just the f minus f i. So you can uh, say that i comma j bar. <laughs> but j is not a in f, and f is not Ah, OK, so there's basically a comma missing. That's yeah. the thing. I see, OK. Oh, yeah, I don't want to write commas all the time. So. <laughs> That's why. If, if I say you don't have a comma, right? It's an F0 set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like also, I, I would have to, to put the singleton parentheses oh, right, and right. so on, but, but I don't like that either. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. But yeah, good that you asked to clarify. Um, 
Um, okay, so so okay here uh, we then get the sort of the complementary one to this one. Uh, so I bar J. So now I abuse the notation even more, and I switch the order. <laughs> right, but it's just about the, the where we put the bar and where we don't put the bar. Um, <laughs> so, so okay. Uh, why does this help now? Well, now we have that these two families are cross intersecting, okay, and this is uh, the crucial thing. Um, so then, f i j and f i bar j are cross intersecting. So. Uh, first, why is that true? Well, we know that the original family F is intersecting. Then all the sets in here originate from uh, sets which contain I and don't contain J. So if we now take one, element, uh, one, one set in, in this family and one set in this family, then the sets that they originate from, if, if those sets here are disjoint, then the or original sets would also be disjoint. Um, okay, but then, and this is why I have kept um, no, that, um, so if they are cross intersecting then we also have uh, this global property but at this point the global property we are always like these are our global families that we are considering right so if you believe me that we can control this part by some sort of induction that uh, we will look at in a moment then I'm now telling you that one of these parts we can control because we have that uh, theorem for the cross intersecting them. Um, and okay, so maybe now you would say, okay, then why do we, why don't you just do this and you uh, why why would you have to introduce this this pseudo intersecting part and so on? Well, basically because if you so if we, would if we would want to continue this, um, then we would have to, to split these up even further. Right? And for splitting them up even further, we would get um, more bars and we would get like, different combinations of how many elements are barred and how many are in the non-barred par part. Um, and, and to control that, we, uh, we, want, to, uh, we want to have this pseudo intersecting. Um, and so now, how does the proof roughly proceed? We do this backwards induction. So we first uh, start to define such a set. And now imagine that we already have defined um, some set mi here. Um, then either every, every set in here already satisfies uh, our property, meaning that, that every f uh, B is is where where B uh, is some subset, some I minus one subset of uh, this M I. Then, um, and I, either this this is pseudo intersecting. What happens then? So now we take some uh, I minus. So this is an I minus one. Set, right? And now we we take some um, I minus one set in this part. Well, then it looks as though these are cross-intersecting, right? Because they, they definitely don't intersect in this part. Um, so we just need to forbid some, uh, some other part. Namely, uh, for, for this, uh, if we write FA, then we want to forbid some part which in particular includes this B part. Right? So we want to uh, forbid some M uh, where, where uh, M contains B and because otherwise it could be that an element in here doesn't intersect anything in this FB family, um, but but the element contains some something from so uh, let me do some color uh, so let's say let's say that um, in this FA uh, family you have some element that looks like this plus something here, right? So this is the set that we originate from. Then um, the, the set that, that results uh, to, to be in here 
will, will be this point together with this part. But then it would be okay if there's uh, some, some other set in, uh, in this B family which uh, is completely disjoint. Like if, if, we take, um, if we take the link of B, right, then we delete this part. So it could be that, uh, that it's completely disjoint uh, on, on this part. But still, th the original sets have an intersection, but we don't in see this intersection anymore uh, when we look at, at these restricted things. So, I mean, maybe that was not completely clear, and, and it's, it's just to give some, uh, like, the idea behind the proof. The, for the proof itself, you won't need this. Um, but, but this is why we really need to take care of, of these, uh, these restrictions as well. So, uh, we need to have those. Okay, but then, um, what we get out of this process, so, okay, we take out B, and uh, we, we can argue in, in some way that, um, that now every family F A, and where we restrict some part, so we forbid uh, some M, that every such thing will be pseudo intersecting, um, by because it is cross intersecting with this uh, whatever family was not pseudo intersecting. Because again, if we're not pseudo intersecting, then we don't satisfy this inequality. But then, if this one is cross intersecting with this one, one of them needs to satisfy the, pro the, the inequality, and that then needs to be this one. Okay, so um, then the question is how do we get rid of this part, right? So now we sort of say that, ah, okay, we get this theorem um, with, like, we, we can create this sense mi, but just such that um, fa with then some forbidden part is pseudo intersecting. And we want to get to, to fa is pseudo intersecting. Um, and that will be the next lemma, but maybe first other questions. So and the, the idea for the proof of this lemma is also just um, just this sort of decomposition. So what does the lemma say? We have our our uh, family and uh, a and and m are just some subsets. And um, if we now have, so what's the setup? We know that um, for, for this set A, uh, we know that we are, in, we are uh, pseudo intersecting given that we have some specific M that's restricted. So if uh, F A M A, okay, so uh, what is this? I think I didn't stress that before, but um, in the definition of these, if, if uh, the, the non-barred part and the barred part are not disjoint, then it will just be empty, right? Because we want to, um, we want to contain one of the, uh, we want to contain A, and we want to have empty intersection with B, so if A and B are uh, not disjoint, then we will just be empty. So, um, we want to take up. Um, and uh, for all x in m minus a. Uh, uh, so did you not finish writing what you wanted to write before the m? Mm. If that family is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Is. Okay. Pseudo intersecting, and um, for all uh, x that, that that are in m minus a, um, f a union x, and then now we have to take out a union x is pseudo intersecting. Um, ah, sorry. And we don't want to restrict this, so just 
one that this is zero to say p. Then we can clean out this restricted part, meaning that we get that F A is pseudo intersecting. So uh, maybe let's just uh, again say, why is this what I uh, tried to sketch over there? So uh, by induction, this, this set mi, we know that every i set that we have in there uh, is pseudo-intersecting, right? Or f at that family is pseudo-intersecting. And this is just the same as saying that this thing is pseudo-intersecting. Because um, we want to clean out the part for um, for some i minus one set, right? This b and this a here, they are the i minus one sets. So um, we want that exactly when we when we add one element, then we're pseudo intersecting. So that is what we know in the overall proof then by induction, um, and then we can clean out for um, for all the other uh, sets the restricted uh, part. And the yeah the the proof is essentially just this thing. So, so what, what is it that, that we know by, um, by the condition? So on the one hand, um, oh, sorry, okay, so, so maybe let's, let's uh, start by giving us some set x, uh, so that x be arbitrary because so what, what we need to show to say that that um, that this family is pseudo intersecting is we need to show that for any x um, so I need to show we satisfy this this uh, That's just the, the definition. So we take some x, and um, then by assumption we know that if we, um, so, so here we have that this is pseudo intersecting, meaning that um, if we add m to, to x, then we know that this thing is true, right? So um, f a, uh, uh, F A M union X uh, and then minus uh, minus A by inequality I just mean this usual inequality between the family and the shadow um, right and th this is just because like, being pseudo intersecting means that we can, uh, we can add any further set as long as, because we are looking at this family, so we need to definitely forbid this part, but then if we add any other x to the forbidden part, uh, we still know that we satisfy the inequality. Um, uh, but also if we take some x that's in m minus a, then um, we also know that, uh, that the same thing but where we take a union x, and then we also take out x here. Um, so uh, f a union x. And now um, the question is in which order to write this. And uh, for the idea, maybe it's a good idea to uh, write it like this. Mm. So, of course, we don't need those, uh, so this all satisfies the inequality. And, of course, we don't really need these parentheses, but uh, this should, uh, should tell us what it is actually that we are doing here. So, we want to delete, starting, uh, starting with, with this family, we want to delete every element that's in it, that, that is still in this restricted part and is not x, right? And um, so we take some x that is in m minus a, 
and um, then we know that okay we can edit here then because these families are pseudo intersecting so we know with whatever we restrict on the other side uh, we satisfy the inequality so we just put uh, what, whatever we, we can put here and we should anyway because we take out a so we should anyway also um, take out x but, but somehow the way that we should think about it is that we want to get rid of m so uh, we take out this x from m um, okay but um, then we uh, down here oh uh, that's the theorem but um, if, if yeah. little x now is in capital X, then uh, then you put it back the x with this union, right? Yeah. Can, can um, you clarify the order of operations, please? It's very confusing. I've always always from left to right. Just and left to right. The, yeah, the, the parentheses are just uh, like an add-on, but mm -hmm. but I I can take okay. it. Um. So. Yeah, we just uh, start with this one. We take out this. We add this. We take out this. Um, <laughs> but 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 yeah, you you can maybe edit little x. Yeah, but uh, but again, so right? um, so uh, the, yeah, the, the the point is that here um, we don't want to do it for any x for any x that that is an x, right? Because like what we need to show again is just this part. So we really want to like uh, implicitly we assume that. That uh, that uh, m um, that m and x are, are disjoint because it, whenever like some part of x is contained in m, then we don't need to get rid of that part, right? So so imagine that you just enlist all the elements uh, that you have here, and you want end, you want to end up with all the elements that are in x, and so you just need to cancel out any element that uh, that is not in x. So, uh, like for instance, also um, x could could intersect with with a, but then again, for those elements, we wouldn't care because um, then then this thing would be true. Um, yeah. So. Um, but but now if um, since we since we have these two inequalities. Um, we recall this uh, the decomposition, right? So so we can write f a again. What's the goal? Our goal is to um, take out this one element uh, x to take it out from this forbidden part. So um, we want to have a and then m minus x. And again, I put this for clarification. Um, we want to have control over this part. We want to say that this thing also satisfies the, the inequality. Because then we can just repeat this process for every such x that we need to get rid of. And in the end, uh, we will arrive just with, uh, with f, a, and x bar. Okay. So, um, but this family is just by the same sort of decomposition that I mentioned before. Uh, this is a. So, this thing here means that we also forbid x, right? So those where we don't specify whether x is in the set or not, we can decompose it into those where we say that x is not in there and those where x is in there. And uh, x being in there, uh, and I should, um, yeah, go on, on this part. Um, so here we, we uh, have this. And then, This and, and in this part, we need to, again, just uh, to, to make sense, we need to add, add in the x, but uh, size-wise we don't. Okay, so we, we again have this, this uh, sort of decomposition. And again, I mean, th this is really just the same thing as, as I did before, just now, but uh, we have to write more stuff here. Um, and also for the shadow, we have the same, the same thing. So I'll just put the shadow of this contains uh, the shadow of this, this joint union, the shadow of this, where we add x afterwards. Okay. But again, what, what is it that we want to do? We want to, sh we want to say that this part, this family here, satisfies the inequality. Okay. 
Um, so then, okay, if we look now at the sizes, the size of this one is equal to the size of this one plus the size of this one. The size of this is uh, because we know that, um, that this part satisfies the inequality. So the size of this is at most the size of this. And because we also know that this part satisfies the inequality. So the size of this is at most the size of that. And uh, so we get that this is equal to, uh, so the size is equal to the sum of the sizes here, which is at most the sum of the sizes here, which is because of this containment and the uh, disjointness here, which is at most the shadow. So we have that f a m is x is a. And that this satisfies the equal. And now we repeat this process for uh, for all the, the x and m minus a. Okay, so this, this proves the lemma. And uh, then I can, is, is there still time for, for five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Probably to wrap up, so. Yeah, yeah. I, like uh, one or two minutes. Okay, 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 yeah. Um, so so the, the, the proof of the theorem is, uh, is now very simple. Um, as I said, we do an induction uh, on, on I uh, starting, so we want to construct these sets MI inductively uh, starting with, with I equal to K. Okay, why does this, this first set uh, exist? Well, the, the only thing that, that, um, that we need to say for that is that, um, so we, have, we need to say that this inequality is satisfied for f taken at uh, every k set of this. But then the only way that this could not be satisfied is if that k set that we're looking at is an edge. Because then you would exactly have that the family, um, the family still contains one set, namely the empty set, but then the shadow would be empty. Um, okay, so how can we find some set that doesn't contain any edge? Well, the original family is intersecting, right? So we just need to throw out one edge, which which decreases the size of the set by just k, and then we know that no edge is completely contained in the rest. Um, okay, so uh, so this part is is clear, and um, then then uh, if if m i uh, is is defined, then uh, we consider the two cases, which is basically what what I said down here. So either um, every family uh, f b um, and then m i uh, m i bar either okay, minus b either this is pseudo intersecting for every b b now being an i minus one subset then we can take m i minus one just equal to the set because with our lemma we can now uh, clean out this part here and we get that actually f b is pseudo intersecting. Okay, this is the, the, the crucial part and where we, where we use that B union with any set on the set MI, we will know that, um, that we can, that that, set, uh, that that family is then pseudo intersecting so we can, can clean up. Um, and so, so either, either this is, is um, pseudo for all B, um, or we have some B that doesn't satisfy this. Then we take out this B, but together with, um, because we're not pseudo intersecting, so we have some set here that we can forbid, but this set will contain MI. Right? So in particular, this whole part is forbidden. Now if we take some, some A that is in this part, then we know that the, the sets that are in this, uh, in this family FB, the sets that they, they originated from, they cannot contain anything from this part. So they can, the, the, the original sets of this family F, FB and some family FA, where we restrict some part, they cannot intersect uh, in the original families. So we get that these two families are cross-intersecting. 
because here we can also again forbid this part, right? We can forbid some uh, any set that that uh, contains mi. And but then we can clean out these again with the lemma, right? And then um, we get that that if we delete b, which decreases the size by by at most, because b was an uh, i minus one set. So we decrease the size by at most i minus one, and that exactly gives us um, that the size of the next one will still be at least of its size. Yeah, sorry, the, this last <laughs> part was now. But, but at least I described it before a little bit, so. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I just missed it. Uh, the lower bound in the conjecture, why is it necessary? Is there like an easy to see example? Um, because I just. <coughs> you mean so, yeah, the, the, the 2K, right? Yeah, the 2K. Yes. Um, okay, so this is, uh, this is uh, a bit curious. So for, uh, for 2K minus 1, it doesn't hold because you can take 2K minus 1 uh, choose K. So you take all the, the K subsets. Uh, of, of 2k minus 1, then uh, you're intersecting, but uh, when, um, but yeah, okay, you, you, can, you can show that there, there is some element that, uh, uh, sorry, that there is no element which satisfies the, the oh, and, but for 2k, it's for 2K it's not clear, yeah. and uh, so one would, one would think that, that somehow like, okay, for, for just, just this one case, uh, it, it should be easy to determine, but it's not clear. <laughs> or I, I don't know, maybe we also just didn't think enough about it. But, ah, okay. Um, but you, you don't know an example, right? Of yeah, yeah, no, no. So, but also, I, I don't know whether, whether, this, was, whether this was just um, that he actually meant to write this. <laughs> um, because because he, he, he writes the conjecture like that, but then... Um, That's the example. The, the, <laughs> he just he gives this example. But, but I, and so I actually think that I, it's just 2K because that's sort of a, a natural bound. Um, but then it's still actually K squared or, or I mean, uh, order of K squared. Um, but, yeah. So for large and your theorem actually proves a lot more things, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, so does your stronger version fails when N is small? Like Mm. Plus one. No, no, maybe you don't know, but for some small n. So, yeah. what, 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 you mean whether, whether, like, if we take some smaller n, whether maybe we could just make it weaker? And oh yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. So, right, it doesn't make any sense. So, so My question doesn't make any sense. But I, I yeah, mean, yeah. There, there's, right, right. there's a point that, um, yeah. okay. even for smaller n, we actually get something, right? Because, yes. um, so yes. for instance, if if we're just interested in k half sets here, then we only need to take take out everything till uh, which goes down here to k half, uh -huh. right? So so this is also a bit strange. You you would think that looking at larger links makes it harder to to find those, but at least with with our method, it actually looks as though that it's easier to to look at larger links and to find uh, some large link that satisfies the property. So for the conjectures, you talk about the existence of such an I. Yeah. Do you also consider how many such I exist? Um, I mean, mm -hmm. yours, yours provides some lower bound. Which right, is right, right. One. Um, but is there so, I mean, the, the, there's just one, one thing that, because maybe one could say, okay, could it be that all elements satisfy this, right? right. Maybe, maybe actually, like, the, the whole thing is, like, has some easy argument. And, and uh, but, but that's not true because, so, for instance, if you take again the edge Corrado family, right, which of course is intersecting, but but the central element, if if uh, n is much larger than k, and by much I don't even mean so much, um, <laughs> then so so what is uh, what is then the size of, of the the shadow like sorry if this is phi then uh, f f one then the size of f one. Um, it's just everything. If n is large enough, then this means that, that this part is actually smaller. Right, so, so by large, I mean something like, like 2k. Okay. Uh, any questions? 
So Depsomia is asking, is there a cross-intersecting version of Franklin's conjecture? Oh, uh, oh, I, I thought I mentioned it, but but yeah, so I can mention it again. Uh, there is a cross-intersecting version here, and we also prove it, but I didn't prove it here. Um, but the, so so yeah, also maybe why I didn't mention it and why I uh, didn't say anything about the proof is that the proof is essentially the same. So so if you um, yeah, if you know this proof, then you can basically uh, do the, the proof as well. And maybe I should say the bound that we get in that case, um, the, the conjectured bound is, is k plus l. And so this is conjectured. And we get uh, n conjectured. Uh, OK, yeah, so we, we get, again, a similar statement here in this more general way. But if we just look at, at one link, then, then it's larger than k times l. Which is sort of the, the same thing, right? It's also like k, k squared. Um, yeah, so there, there's this. All right. Uh, any other question? Mm. Matt, let's thank this.